My name is uh, Tiziano Barbui. I am a professor of hematology working in a Bergamo Hospital Foundation for Clinical Research. The topic I would like uh, to present to you today refers uh, to polycythemia vera uh, in a particular subgroup of patients with uh, polycythemia vera. And uh, I'm going to present uh, preliminary results of a clinical trial that will be presented extensively during the EHA 25 virtual meeting next uh, Sunday. Uh, the, you know that uh, polycythemia vera patients are treated uh, with a phlebotomy to maintain an hematocrit less than 45% on the basis of a clinical trial we have done some years ago and we published in the New England Journal of Medicine in 2013. In this trial, we demonstrated by keeping an hematocrit less than 45%, you can reduce the incidence of a major thrombosis, such as uh, arterial thrombosis and the venous thrombosis, four times higher whether the hematocrit is kept over 45%. Of course, the message of this is that all patients with a PV should be kept with the hematocrit on target. And target is less than 45%. Well, patients today, according to guidelines that we have published in the frame of European Leukemia Net, said the guideline recommend patients younger than 60 years without prior thrombosis should be treated only with a phlebotomy plus aspirin, whereas patients over 60, 65, or with the prior thrombosis should be treated also with the chemotherapy. And the chemotherapy can be interferon, can be hydroxyurea, or can be ruxolitinib, just in cases when uh, patients becomes, become resistant uh, to the conventional therapies that are interferon and, uh, and hydroxyurea. But my study refers only to low risk patients. Because the question is, are we sure that by adopting the guidelines that said you have to phlebotomize patients to keep the hematocrit on target, are we sure that phlebotomy is able to keep the hematocrit over time less than 45? Are there evidence, is there any evidence then this could happen? The answer is no, because we don't have so far evidence of that by doing only phlebotomy in low risk patients. And the second question that motivated our study was, patients can benefit if I get a drug in low risk patients, so there was a perplexity in using drugs in younger patients with EPV because uh, the concern of developing leukemia in these patients. But now we have a, a drug 
that is an interferon that has been approved by EMEA and uh, also FDA that is called raw peg interferon. You inject with a pen like the insulin for, for diabetics patients every two weeks and in some cases also every three weeks. So, and you can, but you have to demonstrate, reduce the need of phlebotomy. What we did was a clinical trial. And the clinical trial initially uh, was uh, the sample size of the study included, uh, should include uh, 150 patients. But after 100 patients, we decided pre-planned interim analysis before starting the protocol. And we have now the results of this pre-planned interim analysis. I'm going to, to present, as I said, during the EHA next Sunday, demonstrating that if you follow the recommendation only phlebotomy, you can keep in one year, in the majority of our patients, the hematograph on target, only in 50-60% of patients. If you add also to this, ROPEG interferon, that is uh, this new interferon, pegylated interferon, you can reach it 87, 90, until 90%. So only 10, 15% of patients cannot be maintained on the target. So, and this difference in favor of interferon is highly significant. It's highly significant also because you avoid the progression of the disease. Progression means you avoid the evolution towards myelofibrosis, towards thrombosis, because the only events we registered with thrombosis was in the standard arm meaning only phlebotomy, just one event. So this is a very important study. And we had to stop this study for two reasons. The first is because we demonstrated that this study was for futility, a for efficacy, should have been stopped to accrue new patients because it has demonstrated that the primary endpoint was met after one year. That was the time when we decided that the endpoint had to be reached, one year of treatment. And the second reason why the Data Monitoring Safety Committee decided to stop the approval of the study was because we are living a terrible moment of our history, that is the COVID, uh, the COVID disease. So the contacts between the hospital or the centers for doing research are not allowed uh, at the moment. So the telemedicine is the new way to follow these patients. So, but, but the decision was to continue the trial until the completion of the study. So we need one more year of follow-up to answer other questions. The other questions were, how many phlebotomy do you need to keep the hematocrit less than 45? 
it appears that after one year, you at the moment, we had a less need of lobotomy in those patients randomized to ROPEG interferon. And that is significant. And this is an advantage for patients. Also because we have also some data showing that ion deficiency, for instance, is less frequent in these patients as compared with the phlebotomy arm. Not only, but we have also the quality of life is better. But at the end of the second year, we wanted to answer a very important question, whether with this drug, we can reduce the jack to a little burden that would constitute the demonstration that you can alter the natural history of this disease.